Hey, uh, my name's Cheese, and I have one of these fancy devices. Very exciting. Uh, I'm going to be developing with it under Linux, and um, the Oculus SDK, the official SDK, just uh, released Linux support, so I thought I'd do a quick video. Um, we'll cut to an unboxing uh, in a second, and see how we go with that. But in the meantime, enjoy! The box that the Rift comes in is robust and solid. It's got a foam insert to keep everything snug, and it's got a smiley face on the front, which is pretty sweet. Inside the box, we can see that uh, everything's laid out nicely and fairly accessible. We've got power adapters. That's just a 5-volt, uh, 1500 milliamp transformer. We've got a DVI to HDMI converter. Uh, assorted uh, power connectors for uh, countries around the world. The Rift itself just uh, slots out like that, and it's attached to its control unit, which has uh, DVI, HDMI, USB and power on the front, and then brightness, contrast, and power controls on the side. Um, we've got elastic headband. It's con adjustable, configurable. Keep it strapped to your head. It's good. Um, there are these adjustment knobs on the side to um, calibrate the distance that your eye is from the lenses, which is pretty important. Um, we've got... Uh, assorted vents and things around the side to stop it from getting too warm in there. As far as other cables go, we've got USB, got a uh, DVI cable, HDMI cable, and uh, and then we also have these lenses. Now these guys are uh, at different heights to uh, allow your eye to be different distances from the, the front of the device. <laughs> Unscrew the old eyepiece and uh, you can see the screen just behind it there and screw the new one in. And you're done. Now the lenses are distorted in such a way that allows uh, the picture to be rendered as sort of a, a fisheye view with barrel distortion. And then the lenses kind of add this pincushion effect, which brings it back to normal straight lines. Uh, and that allows you to have a higher density of detail in the middle of the screen compared to the out of the screen. Uh, and that's fairly important. So uh, as far as plugging it in and setting it up goes, we, uh, we just pop the USB into the control unit there. Plug uh, your uh, power in as well. And then after you've got that, then um, your DVI or HDMI, depending upon which connector you're going to use, and you're good to go. So that's, um, that's pretty straightforward. That's everything that's in the box. How to plug it all together. We're done. Okay, so now that we've seen inside the box, let's talk first impressions. So the first thing you notice as soon as you get it out is that it weighs nothing, which is fantastic. This means that you're not going to have uh, neck strain from wearing it for long periods of time. It's not going to feel like it's weighing down on your face. That's um, that's pretty important. Um, the resolution is it's higher than other stuff I've used, but I mean, as far as games go, games are higher res now, uh, and that means that you've got a lot more dis uh, detail in the distance. And on this, it does kind of tend to, to blur together a little bit. So when I was playing TF2 on my Mac, I found that um, you know, I, it was difficult to tell what team people were on from the other side of Two Fort, for example. Um, not not a big deal, not not hugely, not enough to make it unplayable, um, and, or definitely not enough to make it uh, unenjoyable. It's was, it was definitely still fun and, and interesting and exciting. Um, but with the consumer device targeting, I think, 1920 by 1080 um, that resolution boost is going to be a big deal. It's going to make a huge difference. Um, the other thing that's exciting is um, the field of vision is, is huge. It's like 90 degrees horizontally and I think uh, 110 degrees diagonally. Um, that, you know, previous HMDs that I've used, you feel like you've got a little screen here. Um, but this really gets into the peripheral vision, which makes a, a huge difference. Um, Another thing that's uh, that's pretty impressive is the responsiveness of the head tracking. It's 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 pretty quick. Um, the there's no positional head tracking, only rotational stuff. Um, but if that keeps the cost down, that's not a not a big loss, I don't think. I mean, obviously, depending upon what you want to use it for. But um, but I I don't find that I'm missing it. Um, we've got little vents here to sort of keep it from getting too hot inside, which it will. Gets pretty warm. Uh, you got a screen there, and then you got your your face blasting heat out. Um, but interesting, these um, these vents do provide a lot of light leak leakage uh, into the device. Uh, so if you're wearing it in a bright environment, you know the first couple of times you use it, you're really going to notice that. 
Um, it's not enough to give you any glare off the lenses, or at least not off the, the, the thick lenses, the deep lenses which I use. You know, if you wear glasses and you use the short lenses or something, maybe, maybe you'll see something there, but um, it's not being problematic for me. Um, it is, it's noticeable at first, but you get used to it pretty quickly and, and after a while you don't notice it. Um, I've also found that, that um, it's important to make sure you adjust these, um, these out a little bit with the, the thicker lenses or the, the deeper lenses. Because um, it is really easy to poke yourself in the eye with the lens. I've, I've done it a couple of times and oh, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind if you're going to be playing around with it. Um, but yeah, on the whole, hugely impressive. Um, certainly has a way to go before it's of use to everyone. Um, and it looks like the consumer device is really going to going to deliver on those uh, bits and pieces. Um, hopefully, people who bought in earlier than they perhaps should have haven't been too disappointed by the dev kit. Uh, it's really important to remember that it is just um, aimed at allowing developers to add support to um, to their game, so that when the device itself is released. Uh, that there'll be lots of stuff from day one that uh, that supports it, um, but even still, it's it's still pretty exciting and uh, a bit of fun to play around with. So, let's uh, talk a little bit about APIs. Um, previously, I played with a few um, Linux APIs, which uh, were ports of the original SDK. I expect those to become less active now that the official SDK supports Linux. Um, you know, they've they've sort of been superseded by by vendor support, which is is fine. Um, the official SDK got Linux support a couple of days ago, which is great. Uh, it's going to provide developers who you know were holding off for uh, for vendor provided support with that bit of reassurance. Um, so it's going to be fantastic. Um, the other library that I've I've been playing around with is OpenHMD, and uh, that's licensed under the Boost software license, which is a little bit more permissive and certainly more friendly with free software projects than the Oculus SDK's license. Um, so I expect that that will become the sort of standard for um, for free software projects. In fact, there are people who are currently working on getting support for Blender's built-in game engine uh, using OpenHMD, and Thorworks recently announced that their engine, Massive Engine, is uh, already supporting the, the Rift via OpenHMD, open uh, which is great. Um, Looking at demos, um, this one here that's that's running at the moment is called Firebox. It's a 3D web browser, and the idea is that that each room is a web page, and um, uh, and the content of the pages is arrayed on the walls, sort of like a gallery. Um, so this uses one of the um, the the superseded libraries, um, but it's still you know interesting little demo. All the content from the pages scrolls along the wall so that you can have a bit of a look at it. And then the images themselves appear, making it look a little bit like a gallery. This is one of the Steamlog event pages. And by the looks of things, when I saved a copy of this, we were playing TF2. So that's pretty exciting. Um, the OpenHMD API comes with uh, a fairly simple example. You've got a bunch of boxes arrayed in a, uh, a circular fashion about yourself and at the bottom there's uh, a block as well. It's pretty simple but it tells you what you need to know if you want to make use of the uh, the library uh, which is good. The official SDK comes with the Tuscany demo like just like it does on every other platform. Interestingly after running um, one of the other the demos um, the sensor uh, doesn't get picked up so I find that I need to uh, just unplug that and plug it back in and then it's good to go um, but since I'm not using those it's it's not really a big deal um, so this is the same as the um, the demo that comes on on Mac and Windows uh, not the unity one um, so we don't have fire and a couple of lighting effects um, aren't there as well the mouse is super sensitive um, so uh, I, I sort of would suggest that if anybody's using the uh, the official SDK that they they look at what they can do to sort that out um, in their programs. And uh, yeah, so it's so the same same demo, same view, same trees, same everything. 
and that's great. You know, it's it's uh, really important to see that there's uh, consistency between platforms um, because that's that's really what we're aiming for here is to have the same kind of experience no matter what platform you're on. So uh, yeah, that's that's about it for today. And hopefully next time I'll I'll have some uh, more stuff to show off. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.